blessing me with, with, with the revelation. And even as I, I preach, he's been ministering to me. That song where I said, as I minister to you, I minister to myself. And, and, and that is so true because as God reveals things to me to share with you, he reveals new things to me. Nobody knows everything there is to know about God's word. Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. and one guy thought that he knew everything and now he's condemned to go to hell. And where he'll be thrown into a lake of fire and destroyed to no more exist. He thinks that he is in control of this world, but God is only allowing him to be the prince of darkness for a minute. Right. Amen. And then he's going to take him out. Everybody got Revelations 1 and 8? Mm -hmm. All right, now we're talking about the bread of life, the light of the world, the door, the good shepherd, the resurrection and the life, the way, the truth, and the life. We talked about the true vine, and now. We hear in Revelations 1, 8, it reads thus, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord. Now, this is, he also says this, and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Oh, my God, right there. Right there, in that one verse, he done broke it down. He says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. If I could preach this in just about two or three sentences, Jesus is all you need. Amen? Amen. He's all you've ever needed. He's all you've ever wanted. He's all you've ever desired. The Bible talks about us getting blessed beyond our imagination, anything that we could think of. Amen? And be, why can, how can we do that? Because Jesus is everything. The Alpha and the Omega. All right, now let me roll up in just a second now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you as humble as we know how. Yes, oh, excited about your word, God, that you, Lord, will receive the glory in what we share today. Father God, may hearts and minds be compelled as such yes. to give you the glory and the honor for all that you are in our lives, Father God, whether we realize it or not. Take me out of the equation. Oh, God, please remove Jay out of the equation. Everything about me, Lord, I command and bind the flesh right now in the name of Jesus. Let your spirit man in me come forward, Father God, that this may be preached in boldness, authority, and truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, the I Am series actually began with the call of Moses. Anybody remember that guy? Back in uh, Exodus 3 and 13, Moses said, Who shall I say sent me? When Pharaoh asked, he knew Pharaoh was going to ask that big question. He said, Let my people go. And, and, and it was simple. Tell him that the I am has sent you. Mm -hmm. So all the way back in Exodus, in the third chapter, amen, we find the I am. We also remember that Jesus said, I am my Father, all one. Amen? It says, uh, even you go to the word, it says, let us make man. You understand? Jesus was there for creation. That's deep theology. And the other one made me go back and teach that. Amen? And I'm going to do that. But Jesus came announcing himself as the I am. That's what caused a whole lot of problems for me. Because people remember that Moses was talking to a cat who said, I am. The I am. And here Jesus is saying, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. Hallelujah. We've learned about the eternal one in simple terms. We, we talked about all those things, the bread, the life, the door, the good shepherd. Amen? But we're completing this series of revelations and how appropriate to end with a per personal revelation of just who Jesus is. Well, you know that John wrote this, amen, as it was a revelation given to him on the Isle of Patmos, I believe, is correct? Mm -hmm. Amen. I just want to double check me on that. Yeah. That is all well, right. Amen. Yeah. I don't know why I double check. But here we want to talk about the Alpha and the Omega. The complete one. Anybody ever look at pancake mix? Because mm -hmm. you want pancakes every morning? Mm -hmm. And don't nobody really want to put a whole lot of effort into it. You don't want to add eggs, you don't want to add milk, whatever. You just want to add water. So what do you have to get? You have to get what? A complete mix. Amen? Hallelujah. Jesus is complete. He is the complete one. He takes all the work out of it. Amen? Because he has come, because he has paid the price for our sins, he makes it so that we don't have to do anything but add faith. Amen? Amen. Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Christ 
It, it here is saying Alpha and Omega, if you know the Greek alphabet, Alpha is the first letter, Omega is the last letter. So what he's saying is I am the first and I am the last. I'm everything in between. If we know what we know about letters, letters make up wonderful, wonderful things. For it's through and by letters that we are able to express deep, passionate thoughts about our love for one another. Amen. A love for our mate. Amen. They're letters. Poets use letters. And they, they often use letters. If they don't just use letters to, to rhyme and make the words or what have you, let's go back to the poetry uh, that we find in Psalms where letters make up a, a tremendous part of the structure of each psalm. Amen? Amen. There are, there are uh, countless poems that basically will go from one uh, end of the alphabet to the other end of the alphabet. And that's awesome. And so Jesus, in talking about the alphabet, says, you don't need anything besides me. If you want to make a word, everything that you need to make any word that you want is between Alpha and Omega. It's between A and Z. Jesus is making an illustration. He says, I'm the beginning, I'm the end. It's like, I'm where you need to come to first, and I'll be there at the very end. Amen? Amen. And what's beautiful about the end in God's terms is you can't fathom the end because there is no end. Amen? He just says the beginning and the end so that our simple minds can put and wrap ourselves around that concept. But how many of you know the end of this life is the beginning of an eternal life? Amen. Amen? Hallelujah? Amen. So every desire that's in your heart can be expressed using letters. What could be more expressive than the alphabet? I want to take you here for a second. It's, um, it's the love that makes letters the vehicle for their love. Amen? It's the, the poet expresses unforgettable thoughts. But I want you to think about it for a second. Letters can also express our, our faults, our problems, like S-I-N, D-O-U-B-T. Sin, doubt. How about this one? These four letters jam us all up from time to time. F E A R. Fear. Amen? Amen. But Christ embodies all of the positive and uplifting and encouraging things that we experience in life amen, and can experience in our walk with Him. It's like if you can spell it, you can tell it to Jesus, though. Mm -hmm. Amen? Another way of saying Christ is all, if you go to Colossians 3 and 11, it says, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and all. The beginning and the end. Christ is the beginning and the end. He was the creator and he's the judge. Amen? Our Lord is the great beginner and finisher. Creation, finish. In Genesis 2 and 1, amen? He brought order to chaos. Yeah. Creating plants and animals, creating Adam and Eve, the universe, all of the stars and everything that we see. And then in the New Testament, we find redemption is finished in John 19 and 30, amen? Prophecies of a coming redeemer are fulfilled. The birth of Jesus Christ in Bethlehem, he came. And we know that it happened. The ministry of Jesus, the, those times that he spent walking on earth, giving us the example, the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Amen? Redemption finished. And so finishing awaits his return, does it not? He also finishes work in our lives. How does he do that? Go to Philippians 1 and 6. I'm going to make a quick note of that so you can go back and look at it. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will what? Will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. You see, salvation is just the beginning of what God has in store for us. Mm -hmm. See, if we go to Ephesians 2 and 10, for we are his workmanship, Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Amen. He's 
working on you. When you become saved, when you give your life to the Lord, and you say, Father, in the, in the, I stretch my hands to you, Lord. I need you to be the, 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 the Lord of my life. I, I, I need you to take me. I need you to uh, help me, Father God, to live. Jesus is Lord of my life. That's just the beginning, because what you're saying is, I'm tired of my old life, and I want to start with my new life. The Bible says, all things have passed away, and behold, all things become new. Well, in newness, there's a whole nother track or extension of life to be lived. Amen? There's more life. There's more to experience. And once we give ourselves to Christ, once we allow him to come into our lives, he shows us what our purposes are and what we need to do. And then we begin to live them because he has started a work in us and that work is going to continue until Christ comes back. Amen. So those of us who come in and they say, oh, well, you know, I'm saved, I'm cool, I'm tired, you know. And, we, and somebody comes up to you and say, you know, we need help with ministry in the church. And they say, well, I'm, I'm tired, I'm all right. Because they are sitting on the salvation. Mm. Amen? Oh, when, 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 when the pastor come up to you and asks, said, you know, we got this hole right here, and, and the Lord sent me in your direction. You know, we're real nice about it. We'll ask you, said, you know, you know, the Lord sent me this way to talk to you, you know, and there's this project. Where I really think you can help us out by filling in this position over here. And, yeah, well, you know, Pastor. Um, and they're down Catholic County, they say, well, Pastor, PA, SSA, all right, um, <laughs> I, I sure like to help you out with that, but, you know, I, I, I got, and see, the pastor say, well, I understand that if you change your mind, I want you to know that, um, that we can sure use your help in that regard, just let me know. Uh, here's one I use. Uh, I know that's what you're thinking right now, but why don't you just go pray on it before you give me a final answer? Because what I'm doing is giving them a little bit of time to let the Holy Spirit do what He's going to do. I can't convince them, but the Holy Spirit can. You understand what I'm saying? Another thing you don't understand is when we say no to the pastor, sometimes we're saying no to God. Amen. Uh-huh. Well, I'm going to go over here. See, when I said that again, yeah, sometimes when we say no to the pastor, we say no to God. You got that? I do believe that back jumped a little bit in the Holy Ghost. Amen? And then, finally, he is the one who is to come, which is and which was, and which is to come. The one who died and rose again will begin, will, will come again. This happens. The dead in Christ are going to rise. We find this. Now, a lot of people, a lot of preachers, We'll gloss over this and what have you, and I'm one of them that'll do it. But today I want you to take note. First Thessalonians 4, 13 through 16. I want you to take note of that. And I'm going to read this to you, right? Write a note. You probably won't have time to catch up with me on this one. But, but um, I'm going to, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 16. And um, my brother's already excited about it. It said 13 verses, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. Concerning them which are asleep. I want to clarify that. It said, concerning them which are asleep, which are dead, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. There's hope, people. There's hope. The Bible goes on to say, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. That's right. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend. Hallelujah, God. He didn't send an emissary. He didn't send somebody to stand in. He didn't send uh, somebody that was well trained in, in the applications. He's coming himself, the one who set up the process, the one who put it all together, the one who's made the way out of no way, the one who's, who's going to be a bread in a time of hunger, the one that's going to be water in a time of thirst, the one that'll be a door when you need to get out. Hallelujah, somebody ought to be saying something. Look, if I ain't preaching, then, you know, just tell me now, kick me out of the church. But for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel. If you ain't heard an archangel before, I, I, let me go to my sanctified imagination for just a minute. And if I go to my sanctified imagination, 
dance, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna understand when the, the archangel shouts with that voice, I'm not gonna be able to handle it. That noise that was outside was, was pretty heavy for a hot second, amen? But I'm imagining when the archangel hollers, everybody's attention's gonna be gathered, amen? And with the trump of God, we're not talking about Dizzy Gillespie or Miles Davis. We're not, we're not talking about the trump of God. Mm -hmm. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And if you go to the 17th verse of Thessalonians, when Jesus comes again, he is coming, and, and after the dead in Christ have risen, those who are alive, those who have been around in hope, those of us who are gathered here now celebrating Jesus Christ, that he is Lord, guess what? We'll be caught up to meet him. Amen. Hallelujah, God. We'll be caught up with him in the clouds to meet him in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. The Bible says, so shall we ever be. Be with the Lord. Say that with me. So shall we ever be with the Lord. There will be no time ever again that we will not be out of the presence of the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Think on this time. When you said, Lord, why have you left me? When we preach the seven last words, we get into the Eli, Eli, Shabbat, Lord, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? We've all been at that point, amen? Why have you forsaken me? What this Bible is telling me in the 17th verse of the fourth chapter of 1 Thessalonians, I went backwards on that one because I needed to build this one up because I'm getting ready to bring it in from the outside in just a second. He'll never leave us. What is better is when we are with him, we're going to be in his house. Amen? When was the last time you went to visit somebody and there was an expectation or a fear that they were just going to leave you in their house and never come back? Amen? When you're in somebody else's house, when you're in somebody else's kingdom, when you're in somebody else's domain, they are there. They are in charge, and it is established. God's kingdom is established because God is God. He's not going anywhere, and he wants you to come meet him at his house. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. What? was, what is, and what is to come. The spans of time cannot hold God or his son. Right. Amen. Let me turn this off, because I don't think I need a microphone this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you looking for the one who is to come? These eight weeks that I've preached the I Am, actually I've preached only seven, because my brother picked up one of Hallelujah. But these eight weeks where we've been talking about the I Am, have you gotten to know Jesus? Do you know him for yourself? Amen. Do you understand how awesome he is? The Bible says that the creation worships him and praises him. Amen. And I am so blown away. There's a brother named Louis Giglio who has a church in Atlanta, and he's Chris Tomlin's pastor. I love Louis Giglio. I want just one opportunity to sit down and talk to him. He might have to wait a minute, because when I get in his presence, I already know. It is not Louis Giglio that I'm excited about. It's the God that is in Louis Giglio that I'm excited about. You follow me on that? Mm -hmm. So don't, don't, as I say, don't get it twisted. All right? Don't get it twisted. Because Louis, he, he understands God on a cosmic level. We need to understand God on a cosmic level. The reason we need to understand him on a cosmic level is because, you see, we tend to think of God as it relates to our home, as it relates to our job, 
as it relates to our community or church. Amen? Amen. Used to be church and community were basically the same thing. Amen? And, and you were ashamed to not go to church. Amen? But today, it's kind of flipped a little bit. But I'm here to tell you that if nobody else is on a mission, my mission is to make God and Christ essential in the lives of men. Because that's who we need to hold on to in these times of trouble. Amen? Amen. So Louis got me to thinking about the cosmos. And he can give, I'm telling you, he can go on for two, three hours. I kid you not. He's got two, three hours worth of material to tell you how the universe praises God. Amen? But I want to draw your attention to just one, one piece out of the billions and billions of galaxies that are in the universe. God created this. This right here is just below the Big Dipper. Mm -hmm. but below the last star in the handle of the Big Dipper. Amen? Amen. We call that the North Star. Amen? You'll find what's called the Messer Object M51, which is this galaxy right here. It's called the Whirlpool Galaxy. And on the overall registry of galaxies, it's called NGC 5194. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you, NGC 5194 is so significant to me. Because the Hubble telescope helped us to look across 33 million light years to find this galaxy. Do you know how far 33 million light years is, it's how fast light can travel in 33 million years. If you have a problem fathoming that, tonight go home. That's what I want you to do. I want you to go home. I want you to have somebody um, hold a flashlight and you stand next to them. Somebody say go and they turn on the flashlight. As a matter of fact, they can give you a little bit of a head start and turn on the flashlight and see which reaches the end of the driveway. Uh, first, you or the light. Amen? 33 million light years away. God's universe that is praising him, we call it the whirlpool galaxy. If we home in on it a little bit more, it becomes very spectacular. Do you see all of those stars and all of those bodies, celestial bodies that are in? And as you see why it's called the whirlpool. It's interesting to me that nature, creation itself, can remember and to know who they should be praising. This, this isn't sitting there silent. These things, these stars are singing and they've recorded the sounds that they make. It is awesome to hear heaven sound as it worships God. Yeah. And they know who the creator is and they know that he died on a cross for you and he died on a cross for me. And as we look at the cross and remember that the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, what was, what is, what's going to be, the Almighty is what he said, meaning all power is in his hands. We look at this cross and then we look at his awesome creation. And somewhere right about there, in NGC 5194, the Whirlpool Galaxy, there's a black hole. I want you to understand that as this celestial body worships God, it has its ups and it has its downs. Planets die, planets come alive. Constantly, stars are being formed. The universe is still growing and it is evolving. And in the midst of all of that, it has a black hole. And just like it has a black hole, we have a black hole in our lives as well. But I'm here to tell you, and that boy messed me up because I already knew what I was going to talk about. I want you to know what I'm talking about. In the midst of that black hole, there is hope. There is life. of the black hole in the middle of NGC 5194, the world who galaxy 33 million away. My Savior lives. Do you see this? Do you see what the Hubble telescope has done? 
Jesus is there. If you got somebody in your life that doesn't know Jesus Christ, you ought to leave this place and you ought to run home and tell them about Revelation 1 and 8. And then you need to take them to Romans and you need to tell them that Jesus died for our sins and that all we have to do is confess him and believe that God has raised him from the dead and we shall live forever. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Jesus is waiting for you. Jesus is waiting for you. If you're giving your life to him, remember what I said in the word. Jesus is waiting for you. It's beyond salvation. It's a commitment. Christ committed himself wholly with no reservation. Simply because he is their pastor. Everybody in here has not loved Jesus or known the Lord. But I'm here to tell you that there is a work to be done. If you don't do it here, you got to do it somewhere else. Because God is going to get what he wants to get out of you. If it's not today, it's going to be tomorrow. Somebody's holding back. Somebody's looking at church as a place to come on Sunday just to get together and hear some good songs and to hear somebody talk about Jesus talk about God. This is not a place to just come and to gather information and to keep a seat warm. These seats are, are warm, but look how many seats are in here that are cold right now. That's not the purpose. If that's the purpose, we're failing. The purpose and we're getting to that purpose and we're achieving that purpose is for souls to be set free, for people to be free from their bodies, for people to get out of their own way and let God move in their lives. Yield. 
heal. We yield to you. And now, Father God, we thank you and praise you. And we pray over these people as they're about to leave. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of that Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us now and forevermore. Let everybody say amen. Amen. amen.